If you're really new to the serverless Lambda, S3, DynamoDB, and if you have really stumbled across this terminology called serverless framework, and if you have wondered and scratched your head like mine, that what is the serverless framework and what it does? Well, in this video, we are gonna answer exact on the same question. To really first answer what the serverless framework is all about, I would like to take an example of GitHub. GitHub is an example that we all developers are really familiar of. But I would like to ask one question. Despite GitHub having its own web console where you can just drag and drop your files or really upload, and you can see the changes and the commitments in the track in the GitHub website, but still, why do you use the GitHub CLI or you know the command line as well? Just because it makes our life easy. You know, no one really wants to just drag and drop the file, you know, select all the file, drag and drop multiple times. It's just it's just not good. So that's why we have a concept of command lines. So the serverless framework tries to address exact same issue or uh, in the realm of the serverless development. So the serverless framework is essentially an open source framework for deployment your code on Lambda, S3, SNS, or DynamoDB, or, and a bunch of other services. The serverless framework is particularly made for uh, like serverless paradigm or using, or you know, trying to adopt your online infrastructure on serverless platform rather than as compared to what you call what you can say about HashiCorp's uh, Terraform which is you know it's a kind of cloud agnostic tool which really helps you to deploy your code on EC2 you know on a bunch of other services but the serverless framework is specifically focused on to the serverless side as well and this framework is quite mature and it has been there for a really long period of time. And as you can see, this project has really received 37,000 plus stars on GitHub, which really indicates that it's pretty robust and stable to you know, use and deploy your code. And along with the AWS as well, which by default majorly, majority of the people really use, it does support other cloud providers like Azure, GCP, Alibaba, IBM and others as well. Uh, and if to really get started with this, what you really need to do is log on to the Amazon Web Console, create an IAM role itself, and really, you know, and give them any any permissions to really just kind of uh, access those APIs to create the resources in the Lambda or to really delete the stack or whatever it is. In the brief case as well, you kind of really give give some administrator permissions to do everything what you want, and it will really give you some bunch of keys as well so what you can do is really that use those keys and you know along with the aws cli configure these keys in the command as well and whatever and what it will really do is whenever you try whenever you really deploy the serverless stack using the commands sls deploy it will look up to this it will look up to the uh, keys as well and really try to uh, deploy your code onto the serverless platform or AWS in general. Serverless framework really supports a bunch of variety of language that you really use commonly, like uh, all the languages which is essentially supported by Lambda, like uh, JavaScript, the main, uh, Python, Golang, Java, Kotlin, and others, other runtime as well. So really to get started with this, you kind of really need to install this via NPM and then you need to set up this project. After this, it will really ask a couple of commands and it will really set up this all the project. And as you can see, it has, you know, a main file called serverless.yaml. So essentially serverless framework does support YAML formatting or JSON formatting. But majority of the time, you will really see that people are kind of really inclined to the more YAML as well. The problem with YAML is it's quite hard to grasp for the first time or the first beginners. But when you really kind of really try to adjust with it or when you try to really just practice it enough, it becomes much more easier to get uh, you know comfortable with indentation and all that kind of stuff. So that's really wrap up our introduction about serverless framework. And if you really want me to make other much more hands-on demos video, let me know in the comment box below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Till then, stay connected, stay subscribed. If you have any questions, queries, comments or any some sort of solution, just let me know what you think about this one. And until then, I'll see you next time.